Hey, good day to you all. Whatever time of the day you find yourself uh, listening to this message or watching this video, good day to you. Um, I just needed to um, basically take the time out of my day um, to share with you um, this particular parable that's found in Matthew, the 13th chapter, verses 24 through 30. Um, this particular parable actually is one that I read the other morning for devotion after my mother and I had a conversation um, dealing with something. Um, and I just wanted to share this particular um, devotion with you. It was um, out of Matthew 13, um, verses 24 and 24 through 30. It says that, and I'm, I failed to mention that the 13th chapter of Matthew is actually um, dealing a whole lot with parables. Matthew is writing a whole lot about parables and it's parable after parable after parable. And I believe after this parable is the parable of the mustard seed. Yet and still, um, if I can talk about the parable of the wheat and the tears real quick, I will get on through. It says, um, another parable he put forth to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed seed in his field, good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tears among the wheat and went his way. My God, that's just how they do. That's just how the enemy do. He'll come and do something and then and go his own way like he ain't did nothing. Like everything good. <laughs> That's how the enemy do. But this is what the parable says. So this particular enemy came, sowed tears among the wheat, and went his way. But when the grain had sprouted, listen, and produced a crop, then the tears also appeared. So the servants of the owner came and said to him, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have tears? He said to them, An enemy has done this. The servant said to him, Do you want us then to go and gather them up? But he said, No, lest while you gather up the tears, you also uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And at the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, who are the angels, First gather together the tares and bind them in bundles, wow, to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. Thank you, Lord, for your holy and divine word. The parable of the wheat and the tares. This is a particular parable that I have heard over the years and actually heard reference time and time again, but I actually never... um took the time to read it and dig into the parable like I have other parables. Nevertheless, but in reading this parable um, during this season of my life and the other day after my mother and I had discussed some things, um, a whole lot became evident because um, Jesus actually starts off and said the kingdom of heaven is like a man who actually so good seed in his field so you have this man who's sowing good seed in his field so anybody who have a field like we grew up on a field and my grandparents actually had a whole lot of land and space where you know we took the time to till the ground and sow seeds in the ground and i perhaps was the last generation to actually experience that um, whereby we were able to grow things and um, Jesus is saying you have this man who's sowing this good seed in his field and um, but while the men slept an enemy his enemy it says his enemy so you got to understand that you know we all have enemies whether we know them or not whether we can see them or not you must understand that you and I have an enemy and his name is satan the devil actually on um one video that i created um the the judge advocate the accuser the advocate and the judge 
um, dealing with Revelation, um, we were talking about this particular person, the devil, Satan, in Revelation 12, who actually deceives the whole world when he was thrown out of heaven into the world. In that video, I discussed how he was thrown in, you know, down into earth. Michael and his angels actually threw him out of heaven. He got evicted out of heaven, and he was thrown into the earth. And, um, you know, the word of God lets us know in this parable that, you know, this man who sold good seed had an enemy, and his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. So our enemy actually, you know, this is the thing about the enemy. The enemy is not one that's going to, you know, confront you uh, face to face. You know, um, man to man, uh, woman to man, or however you want to put it, the enemy is going to be uh, deceitful about what it is that they're doing, what it is that they're trying to accomplish. In fact, I, I, I truly believe, even within our churches today, that uh, the enemy has started and began, but way before today, and began to use even people within the church, uh, leaders within the church, and use them as puppets, those who actually would do the bidding for Satan, the devil. And these individuals, they can speak in tongues, they can preach the word, they can sing, or whatever you want. But you got to understand, there are those who actually are being used and controlled and manipulated by the enemy, by Satan, by the devil. At the beginning of this year, the Lord actually instructed me to not allow anyone to sow negative seeds in my life. And this didn't become evident until I began to read and meditate on this word. The enemy um, actually, you know, desires to sow negative uh, seeds in our hearts and in our spirit, man. And at the beginning of this year, the Lord instructed me, do not allow anyone to sow negative seeds into your life. Basically, don't allow the negativity to fill your heart, to fill your inner man, to fill your spirit. But you have to actually um, cover and watch your air gates and not allow the enemy to sow those seeds. Because one thing about seeds, as the word of God says, he said in verse 26, but when the grain has sprouted and produced a crop, then the tears also appear. So one thing about the seeds, when it's when it's sown over a period of time, you will begin to see a crop. Therefore, you will begin to see that thing that was planted. Therefore, um, beginning of 2020, the Lord told me, do not allow people to sow negative seeds, corrupted seeds in your life. Because those seeds over time will begin to grow and will begin to sprout. And for myself, you know, when you are someone who are actually trying um, and, and working out your own self, soul salvation, you don't need negative people in your life. You don't need people who are actually sowing a negativity into your heart and into your spirit, man. You need people around you that will be able to help lift you up in the things of God, to lift you up in the things of the Lord, and to lift you up in His holy and divine word. And for that very reason, in reading this parable, for an example, um, that's something that I learned. I learned that, you know, this, this man actually was sowing good seeds in his field, but yet and still, his enemy came and sowed tears among the wheat and went his way. Therefore, one thing about the enemy, when he do something, when the enemy, even when the enemy uses people to do something, what the enemy will do is the enemy will just go their way. That person will just go their way like it, nothing never happened. And that's the sad part. And my heart just breaks because in the first video, YouTube video I ever created, uh, dealing with Romans 12, um, 3 through 12, the gifts from the Father. If you ever want to search the gifts from the Father, that first video 
I ever created. One of those gifts is the gift of mercy. And I believe it's the last gift that the Apostle Paul talks about. Yet and still, you know, whenever, you know, the enemy uses someone and, you know, you know, that person goes their way like nothing ever happened. Like, you know, they didn't do anything. You have to actually extend that gift of mercy. And that is what the Lord is saying to me in my life. Jeremy, you have to extend that gift of mercy. You cannot allow, you know, um, because the enemy sowed that negative seed, um, you cannot allow that to be uh, justification for you feeling a certain way about that individual. And I don't know who I'm speaking to on this, but you got to allow your heart and you got to be a big enough person to um, extend mercy. And that's what Jesus said in Matthew uh, what 5. Bless are the merciful for they shall attain mercy. So that's one thing about mercy. Whenever you are able to extend mercy, you will receive mercy. But whenever you shut your bowels up to giving mercy and extending it, so will the Lord. The Lord will cut off his mercy to you. Therefore, I, I just want to continue and finish this by saying in that 27th verse, it says, So the servants of the owner came and said to him, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? How does it have tears? Wow. See, because when people know and see that you have sown good seeds and you have you have this actual um habit of sowing good seeds and you're not sowing good seed just to for somebody to see you or to applaud you but you're sowing good seed because that's your nature because that's who you are and these guys actually say have you not sown good seed <laughs> and listen what he said the guy he said an enemy has done this an enemy has done this the servant said to him do you want us then to go rather and gather them up? Do you want us to go gather them up? But he said, no, lest while you gather them up, the tares, you also uproot the wheat with them. Let both go together until the harvest. And at the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, who are the angels, first gather together the tares, bind them in bundles, and burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. Therefore, this particular um, ending, is Jesus is saying that, you know, he's going to not, you know, um, try to immediately, um, you know, uproot the tares because his desire is none should perish jesus don't want any one of us to perish he said i desire everybody you know to be in this household of faith i know you know as humans in our nature and our fleshly human nature we desire people to perish and we desire people to die you know in sin Yet and still, Jesus said, I don't desire any in the parish. Therefore, I'm going to allow them to grow together. I'm going to allow them to grow together. This is going to be, you know, this is going to be a, a, a patient thing. You know, it's going to be a time thing. I'm going to give them time to turn to me, turn and get right. And in the explanation of this parable, when we view um, verses 36 through 43, the disciples asked Jesus, you know, explain this parable to us. Explain this parable to us. And I love what Jesus said because he kind of break it down real point blank and simple. In the 37th chapter verse, he said, he answered and said to them, excuse me, he who sowed good seeds is the son of man, Jesus Christ. The field is the world which we all live in the world. The good seeds are the sons of the kingdom, but the tares are the sons of the wicked one. Wow. Wow. The good seeds are the sons of the kingdom, and the tares are the sons of the wicked one. Wow. Okay. 
the enemy who sold them is the devil wow and that goes back to saying that the enemy the devil will use people to sow tears in your field to sow tears in your life to sow tears in your heart and if you're not careful and if you're not watchful and prayerful like jesus instructed his disciples the enemy the devil will come in your life and sow tears into your field listen to me the enemy job as stated in um john 10 10 video the true and the good shepherd video is to kill steal and destroy those three things right there and basically that's what the enemy the devil was trying to do here with this whole sowing the tears the enemy was trying to destroy the harvest the enemy was trying to destroy the harvest and if you don't understand that the enemy is trying to destroy the harvest of your life then you are missing you're missing what it is that jesus have for you to do and what it is jesus have for you to say in this particular walk with him he says the enemy who sold them is the devil the harvest is the end of the age and the reapers are the angels therefore as the tears are gathered and burning fire so it will be in the end of the age the son of man will send out his angels and they will gather out his kingdom all things that offend and all those who practice lawlessness listen and will cast them into the furnace of fire there will be wailing and gnashing of teeth there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth i know that we're not living in the day and the time that preach about fire and brimstone anymore but yet and still this is where they get that from because in this parable jesus is basically saying those tears those sons of the wicked one is all going to be gathered together and thrown into the fire where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth he said then the righteous will shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father he who has ears let them hear i just encourage you today to continue to read the word study the word believe the word walk in the word and do the word i know this is a walk for all of us and and if you desire my god to actually have this walk with the lord only thing you have to do is confess with your mouth that jesus christ is lord and believe in your heart my god that he's raised from the dead and you will be saved i mean you don't even have to step into a church to do that you can do that right where you are and i know that we're living in a day and time where we believe that we have to be in the church uh 24 7 uh basically um a form of godliness where you know whereby we can brag and boast that we're actually in the in the house the physical church building However, um, whenever you grow into that knowledge and know that you are the church and God desires for you uh, not only to be saved, but that you also um, invite others to be saved and know this same God that you know. So I just pray that you continue to um, be blessed and that God continue to keep, keep you on your faith journey and on your faith walk. Love you all.